Do you support rent control? In what way would it increase the supply of affordable housing? What are the disadvantages of rent control? And we snug three questions in there, but you got 90 seconds. Yes, I do. Our three questions in 90 seconds. I can do this. I support uh, a variety of options to help keep renters in their homes. What we know is that it's cheaper to keep people in their homes than it is to try to find them a new home. Uh, rent control, yes, I'll be in Salem next legislative session lobbying to pass rent control. But we can't just stop at rent control because the reality is that the median income in the Portland metro area is $72,500 and most working people don't make 72,500. So we can't just stop at rent control. We have to make sure that people are able to live in every neighborhood in the city of Portland and that their income does not determine their zip code. And we have to be creative. We have to think outside of the box. We got to start thinking about multi-generational housing. We've got to think about shared housing. We got to think about housing houseless families with empty nesters. There's a great pilot project that's been going on for the last couple of years, I'm looking forward to being able to expand that uh, at the city of Portland. I think we have to not eliminate any option that helps people, people stay and maintain safe, affordable housing. Uh, and affordable housing is housing that people can afford to live in. It's not just a label that we tend to put on a lot of development projects. People have to be able to rent those units. In my neighborhood, we have 60-year-old women on the freeway overpass begging for money. Ms. Smith. Thank you. Um, I've lived through housing insecurity with me and my son when he was young. We, we couch surf. He is now 27 years old. And my son went to three different elementary schools growing up. And uh, we struggled with housing. He was a trooper, trooper but he was pretty tough, and, and I was too. Maintaining affordable rent is a big deal when it comes to working families and single parents. We need increased renter protections, such as limiting rent increases on subsidized affordable units that are, are not greater than the consumer price index. Some landlords claim that they want to move back into their homes and they displace renters. To ensure that this is not an excuse to raise the rent, the landlord should be required to, to rent the space for a year. This will provide some checks and balances. This is also used when you purchase a home from FHA. Uh, they have a policy like this, and I don't see why we can't use the same framework for owners who want to move back into their homes. The other piece about this, I have an idea there are 970 brownfields, and I'd like to use those as mixed-use developments. Is there an administrative experience that you would highlight that illustrates your administrative abilities? Yes. What a great question. I would say my ability to bring a civil rights organization back from the graveyard that was 101 years old, I had no money to pay people, I had no budget. I had nothing but goodwill uh, when I became president of the NAACP Portland branch. I knew that I, if I had any blood left in my body, I had an obligation to make sure that the oldest civil rights organization west of the Mississippi survived. I am happy to say when I resigned earlier this year, it was an organization that had no debt. It had an office, which is the first time they've had an office in 50 years. It has excellent committees and excellent leadership, and I'm confident that they will do great things now that I'm gone. Um, I have uh, I've spent a lot of time both as a supervisor. When I was at Oregon Action, I supervised not just seven staff, but also hundreds of volunteers to work on some of the most critical issues in our community. I think my best skill set 
is my ability to be a convener. And I love convening people who don't agree with me because once we get together, we look for areas of commonality and we work in those areas. I have a lot of friends from my uh, legislative days that I continue to meet with and it's because I'm always looking for where are the links, where are the connections and that's my desire and I think those skills will serve me well on the Portland City Council. One of the things that we have to do here at Multnomah County, I've, I've been here for eight years and I worked for Senator Wyden uh, for 21 years and I've been a public servant all of my adult life but the key experience that I learned is how to allocate funding that's very important uh, for an administrator. When the community came to me and said, Commissioner, uh, communities of color, they said our kids are not graduating um, from high school at the same rate as everyone else. Um, what can you do as a commissioner to help us uh, help more students graduate from high school. So with my experience on the federal level, I knew that there were dollars that we needed to, um, to go after. And I identified a program called the Promise Neighborhood that President Obama uh, started when he became a, a president. And so I started going back and forth to DC because we had relationships with, with people on the federal level. And I started to talk to them about what was going on with Portland in terms of communities of color and the disparities in education in health and employment. And so they did um, point out that the promised neighborhood would be something that we should apply for. So I kept with that. And over the last four years, we applied three times for it. This past month, we were notified that we actually got the promised neighborhood, which would bring in $5 million uh, for the next five years for communities of color. So I'm happy about my ability to identify funding as an administrator. Um, what bureau of city government would best suit your strengths as a leader? Well, I will uh, accept any bureau that the mayor assigns me. Um, but the bureau that I think that has been selected for Dan Saltzman will continue to be for the next city council person, which will be the, the fire 911 uh, Bureau of Emergency Management Fire and Police Pension Fund. And one of the, one of the first things that I think we need to do and the, and the thing that I think that I'm most concerned about, even as a county commissioner, I've talked about this, I'm most concerned about a major earthquake happening here. I served as the regional disaster preparedness um, representative on behalf of Multnomah County, and it provided me with an insight on how public-private entities are working to make us more resilient when uh, the actual big one hits. But we have a lot of work to do, and it's estimated that 94% of neighbors will be saved by another neighbor. And that's why it's so important that we need more neighbors prepared. We need to make sure that our seniors and vulnerable people are fully prepared for disasters. And I will work with PBM and marketing experts to expand our outreach efforts for our fire department. I want to review their staffing levels. Firefighters do a lot of the jobs. They fight structure fires. They're medical professionals and so much more. I want to review those staffing levels to make sure they are adequately staffed while also looking to find efficiencies. Well, I've asked Mayor Wheeler for the police bureau, but he said no. Um, but it's okay, because I plan to work very closely with Chief Outlaw to ensure that we make changes to the police bureau so that all community members can feel safe when they encounter law enforcement throughout the city of Portland. I'm really excited about uh, the fact that I will inherit all the rest of the public safety system, because quite frankly, we've invested way, way too many resources in policing with little results, and we've invested almost nothing in the rest of our emergency response system. Um, we, are, we need more firefighters. Uh, we need to make sure that firefighters have the equipment that they need. Uh, they are facing severe cancer risks uh, because of the toxicity of today's fires as compared to in the past. Uh, we need more 911 operators. Uh, we're just starting to get up to staffing levels in the 911 call center, but I'm really looking 
forward to figuring out how we make sure that every community uh, knows uh, who the right uh, first responder is when there's an emergency so that we're not uh, spending a lot of time triaging phone calls, but we're actually getting the right first responder to the incident as soon as possible. Thank you so much for uh, having this today because this is very important because we have to let you all know what we think about and what our thoughts are. But let me leave you with a couple of closing thoughts. My entire career has been devoted to public service. When you elect me, you get an advocate who knows this city through five generations of family. You get someone who spent her entire life serving the public. Everything I do is to promote the communities that I come from. This isn't about politics. This is about listening to you. This is about delivering for you. And this is about being your champion. This is about being Portland's champion. I have a long track record of investing in our community, especially to the lives of those who are most vulnerable. I have done it before and I will do it again. When elected, I will start working on day one to make sure that we create more affordable housing, continue to address homelessness, and create jobs and opportunities for those who have been left out. And Ms. Hardesty. Thank you so much and thank each and every one of you for coming out this evening. I would like to earn your vote for Portland City Council and I'd like to earn your vote because I hope what you've learned tonight and what you'll learn when you do your own research about the candidates is that I show up whether I'm paid, whether I'm in a position of power, I show up and I do the work. And I've done that work consistently for almost 30 years in Portland. Though I wasn't born in Portland, I hit the ground running when I got here. And I have been an active voice for those without a voice in this community since the day I showed up. I didn't wait for a title. I didn't wait for permission. I was talking to someone a little earlier that reminded me that we were working on repealing Measure 11 back in the early 90s, uh, long before anybody thought that was a cool thing to do. Um, but we did it because it was the right thing. I will make sure that it's not my voice, but your voice that's considered in public policy decisions. Thank you. And my thanks to the candidates. I think you can see the range of information and knowledge that they have and the commitment that they have to the city. Thanks also to Metro East Community Media for recording, the volunteers for helping, and all of you who did put in your questions. Please check our website, lwvpdx.org, to view all our forums and for TV replay information. For more election information, pick up our nonpartisan voters guide either at the local library in the back of this room, New Seasons Market, or Meals on Wheels Dining Center. Or for other information, go to 411.org. Election Day is November 6th. As in all Oregon elections, you will receive a mail-in ballot. If you don't, check with the County Board of Elections to make sure that your registration is accurate. Ballots must be mailed back early or delivered to an official drop-off site anywhere in Oregon no later than 8 p.m. on Tuesday, November 6th. A postmark does not count. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.